Today we're shooting on a ledge. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. This is our beautiful model, Avery. How you doing today? Good. She's uh, up here on a ledge, and uh, I'm up here on a ledge too. And uh, we're, we just actually just got wrapped up done shooting. We're going to show you guys basically all the way through the entire photo shoot. So our goal for this photo shoot was to basically match the ambient light, which is the light coming directly from the sun with a softbox here that we have. And the reason why we're doing this is to build up a 50-50 percentage. Basically, we want half of the light that's coming from the sun and half of the light coming from our softbox. And we're doing that to kind of cancel out some of the shadows. So we're shooting in a really unique environment right now under this tree and we're on a ledge. We're about like 10 feet in the air right now. And uh, we're just basically like walking around saying like, oh, that looks really cool. Let's go ahead and shoot there. Now, we wanted to choose the location where we kind of were battling with the shadows because, well, it's a really good teaching point. And here's something you guys can do. If you're using a strobe off camera, like what we're using right now, we've got an Einstein and that's set to about a quarter power right now. It's really close to our subject. It's got a soft box on it. It's basically just a large octobox. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna fill in some of the shadows. So as we're shooting here, if this were just shot in natural light, we'll put a camera, we'll put a shot up right now where you can see this is just done with natural light. So there's nothing at all. Now here's a shot with the soft box and it's actually filling in a lot of those shadows. So even though we're not like completely lighting our scene, we're using this soft box to fill in the shadows and give the image an overall rounded, well look shot. But it doesn't look like it's been necessarily quote unquote lit. Like it looks a lot more like a natural shot, even though we have filled in those shadows with our soft box. Our camera settings today, we're shooting at one over 1 60th of a second. And that's really as fast as I like to push shooting with an off camera flash. Sometimes you can get it to 200th of a second or 250th of a second, but 160 is gonna get a hit rate 100% of the time. We're shooting at F10, so we need quite a bit of power coming from our flash as well. So really, I don't want a whole lot of light coming in from my scene. We're shooting at you know, relatively fast shutter speed. If we knock that down to like one over 50th or one over 20th, we'd get way overexposed from our sun. So I'm not looking for like an incredible exposure on Avery's face from just the sun because we've got our softbox to do that as well. Now we're shooting at 5600 degree Kelvin white balance, which is just, if you guys are using like a digital SLR like this, it's just gonna have a flash setting. And what that does it basically is your daylight setting or you know what is um, 5600 degrees is matched to the flashes, which are also matched to daylight. So we don't really have to worry about gels or anything like that in this case, because these are already matched to daylight. So the color temperature of what's coming out of our octobox is gonna be the same as what's coming out of our sky. So they're just gonna match really well together. So our main goal here is to match our lighting from basically our overhead light, which is the sun in this case, and the softbox. So if you have too little coming power coming from your softbox, it's really not gonna do a good job to fill in your shadows. If you have too much light, it's gonna look like it's very lit. So what you really wanna do is try to balance. You want half of your light coming from your ambient and the other half coming from the, sun, from the softbox, and it should look like you don't have a softbox at all. It should look very, very natural. Um, that's if we did it correctly. It can be really tough to see what you're doing when you're outdoors. Um, in this case, we're just kind of look, looking at an LCD. If you want to bring out like a cart and bring out a computer and like a shade and everything like that, that's one way to kind of check all your exposures. The other way is to use uh, one of these like loops. This is a loop by Hoodman and it's basically just an LCD loop. You just put it directly over top of your LCD and then you just look through the back and it really does help. I mean, it reduces all the sunlight that comes so you don't see any of the glare and things like that. Um, it, it might seem like it's a bit of a silly, silly accessory, but when you guys are shooting like outdoor and bright sun, it really does help out quite a bit. Um, the other thing you can use is a light meter. A lot of the more advanced light meters like a L758DR will show you the percentage of light coming from your ambient versus from your strobe. Um, so that's if you want to get really technical, you can actually do it like exactly right with a light meter or you can just kind of play around with your shutter speed. So what, what I would recommend is get your shutter speed kind of dialed in. In this case, we're using 1 over 1 60th. If you look like you've got too much power coming from your softbox, what you want to do is close down your aperture a little bit. So if you're shooting at F10, 
go to something like F11, it's gonna reduce the power that's coming, the amount of light that's coming out of your softbox, and it's gonna bat match that exposure a little bit better. If you're shooting at F8 and it looks like there's too little power, then you wanna open that up. So maybe you should start shooting at 5.6. It's gonna allow more light from the softbox to hit your subject, and the overall exposure won't change that much if you're dealing with the same shutter speed from above. Sorry, the other way. So like you're you're like pushing off of that rock. Oh, like yeah, there we go. Maybe bring your hand a little bit closer to the edge. There we go. Okay, and then roll roll your body around the other way. Beautiful. There we go. Yeah. Beautiful. Can you bring your um, your leg with your high heel? I just can't see it. If you could bring it closer this way. Perfect. Perfect, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, I love that where you're staring off that way. Yeah, very nice. Let's switch it up maybe and just have like your, have your butt kind of where it is, but instead of facing this way, let's just kind of face out in this direction here. Yeah. That'll be perfect. Perfect, and as long as I can see those heels, that's what we want. Yeah, gorgeous. Can we point your toes if we can? Yeah, there we go. Now as far as posing goes, when you're in a situation like this that's a little bit unique, you need to kind of take some things into account. Um, first, we've got like a tree right above us, so uh, was that difficult at all? Um, a little bit, but I would have to say the most difficult was trying to angle my feet and my hands in a position that would look flattering towards the camera and that you would see and everything like that. Yeah, that's perfect. You don't have a mic on you, so I'll just repeat it again. And there's a train coming right behind us, but she was saying that... Trying to find a pose that was uh, really still flattering and you could still see your hands and her feet because that's a really good point because we're kind of like on this ledge. So if I like bring my hands back, things like that, these are things you can't really see. So that it might look flattering from one angle, but you have to keep in mind that the camera is kind of like, you know, down at an angle like that. So staying outwards made sure that we were able to see everything. Um, your feet kind of like dangling over, even though it's kind of like a bit loose rubble here. So it's a little bit dangerous, but <laughs> it's still really fun. And um, yeah, making sure that we could see, you know, hands and feet and things like that. So that's most of what it was for posing. And then we wanted these to be, you know, we went half of them with a little bit more of a, um, like a stylized look where you were actually like doing a lot of angles with your body. And then uh, after that, we just went for a natural look where it just looked like you were chilling, straight gangster up yeah, here. Too cool. You are too cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's noticeable. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so that was the whole idea behind posing, is to do a couple different variations of the pose and to make sure that, um, in this case, that everyone can see the actual features, so the hands and the feet and things like that. Guys, thanks so much for joining us along on this shoot. I hope you really enjoyed it and learned a ton. Now you can get out there and match daylight with using a strobe and make sure that the exposures match and you're gonna be filling in your shadows, making a really, really nice exposure. Thanks a bunch, guys. We'll learn you later.